Man, we're fired up. If this is your very first time with us, wave at me. We're so excited that you are here. Uh, if you have never been here before, uh, this, this is going to be an amazing day. We're in our Favor Ain't Fair series, week number three. Uh, how many of y'all have been in a service with me before? Come on, wave at me. Okay, cool. How many of y'all have no clue who I am? Uh, okay, cool. Well, we're going to have fun. Pastor Jeremy will be back next week. How many of you guys have enjoyed this series so far? It has been incredible. Uh, my name is Daniel Groves. I have the privilege of serving here as the teaching pastor at Hope City, and I'm just fired up. Pastor Jeremy has literally been on fire the past two weeks in Favor Ain't Fair. Week number one, he begins to unpack how none of us deserve favor, right? We can all unanimously agree. None of us deserve favor, but we serve a good, good father who wants to bless us with favor. Week two, he unpacked how gratitude sustains favor and blessing in our lives. And this week, we're gonna jump in and I think that this is going to be one of those weekends that we brag and boast on the things of God two or three years from now. Yeah, yeah, I remember that was the weekend God showed up. Heaven touched earth in my life. I got caught in between and I left better. Look at the person next to you and say, you're going to leave better. Come on, let them know. Say, you're going to leave better. Now, this is the thing about being in a series like this. What it has ended up happening is it's almost like empowered and provoked you to start noticing favor. Have you started noticing more favor in your life? Come on, thank you for your overwhelming enthusiasm. Have you started noticing? It's like when you go to buy a car, you're like, I'm getting this car because no one else has it. And then you buy it and you're like, everybody has this car. How, how does everybody have this car? I've just started noticing favor. Now, my wife and I went shopping the other day because uh, shoes are my love language. Um, I don't have a problem, I can quit anytime. And so we went shopping and she went in and said, I wanna get these really cool socks. I'm like, okay, cool, so we're in there. And while I'm checking out, this girl's like, hey, um, we're about to close and we've got some closeouts. Like this bag up here, um, it's like 50, 60 bucks. Um, it's 99 cents. Did do y'all want it? I was like, what do you mean do I want it? She's like, do you, do you like it? I was like, does the shark like snacks? Yes, I like 99 cent deals. Like, this is amazing. She's like, and this cool jacket over here, it's reversible. It's like 60, 70 bucks. It's 99 cents. I'm like, wow. So I believe that was favor. We started seeing favor. And then we went over to this other store and uh, no shade at all. I love good deals. We went to Marshall's. This particular day, it's like there was a riot in 07 and they forgot to pick everything up. Like there's stuff everywhere. I don't understand it. Like people are literally like, Hey, I think this is my size. And they're like, no, that's not my size. Like, <laughs> and then it ends up over in the international food aisle. where like, we're buying items we don't need like chocolate dipped bacon with rosemary from the Ukraine. I need this. My wife's like, why are you buying all those snacks? I'm like, cause they're one of a kind. I'll never get these again. So we're literally there. I'm walking around next to the jalapeno stuffed olives from Hungary. There was a jacket laying there. I'm like, look at it. And I picked it up and it was my size. That's favor, guys. I found it. You can find favor. God wants to unlock favor in our lives. And I feel like so many times we position ourselves and wonder, does favor really belong to us? I believe that if we could stop getting caught up in our human mindedness and recognize that we don't have all the answers, we don't know all of the things that we need, but the truth is when we have God's favor, we have everything we need. Here's our foundational verse kicking off today. Psalms 90 verse 17 says this, may the favor of the Lord our God rest on us. Man, I love that phrasing. Isaiah 61 says that we are called to put on a garment of praise. That's a choice to replace heaviness and to apply the garment of praise. And this right here says, may the favor of the Lord, come on, just receive that. May the favor of the Lord rest rest on you. And then it goes on and says, and establish the work of our hands for us. Before we go any further in week number three of Favor Ain't Fair, I need to honor two people because we're all in this facility and across all of our additional campuses and additional seating because two people said yes to the call of God on their lives. Can we honor our pastors, Pastors Jeremy and Jennifer Foster? Today, I want you to open your heart. I want you to open your mind because if we allow God to uh, 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 shine a light in different areas of our lives, we'll recognize how much favor impacts every area of our life. I wanna clear up a misconception though. Favor does not mean favoritism. Like God is not a respecter. He does not say, uh, new purse for her <laughs> and shoes, but these peasants get nothing. Like that's not the way it works. We have to have the understanding that the one who gives us favor, this is part of the promises that he wants to unlock. And when we walk in his ways, his will, his word and his righteousness, he loves to pour out his favor on our lives. That's why we are so big on discipleship here at Hope City. That's why we're really big about empowering you to have a personal 
relationship with Jesus. This whole thing we do week in and week out is not a religious experience. This is not about religion. This is about relationship. Matthew 6, says it this way, but seek first the kingdom of God. Another translation says, as your prior, priority or above all else, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, watch, and all these things, the good things, will be added unto you. We believe that the closer you get to the heart of God, you'll realize that he's a good, good father who wants to give you good things. The, the other reason why we want you to connect is because we believe that iron sharpens iron. If you have not already connected in a connect group, jump into a connect group. If you're a part of a connect group, wave at me, come on. We have over 600 groups across the whole city, over 6,000 people across the whole city. We believe we're a church that's large enough to serve and make an impact, but small enough to know you. Relationship is also developed, and we believe the unlocking of favor in our lives is foundational to our relationship. Relationship individually and relationship in a community. Pastor Jeremy talked about how we have a part to play in this, though. Like this whole favor thing, there's things that we do and can do. It's not works-based. But in our humanity, there's some things that we do to play a part. Pastor Jeremy said in week one that God's favor is often dependent upon our obedience. So we don't like that, but it's true. Proverbs chapter three, verse one and six says it this way. My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments for the length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck, write them on a tablet of your heart. Watch, so you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. So a lot of times it's dependent upon our obedience. And here's another part that we play in our humanness. Number one, if you're taking down notes, which we always encourage you to, favor is connected to expectation. Now I say this every time. If you've been in a service with me, you know what I'm about to say. If you're a hearer only, you retain 5% of what you hear. So literally, you show up, you listen for a few minutes, and then you leave with only 5%. That's not a lot. But if you take down notes in real time, it goes up to 35%. If you take down notes and then go back and apply them, 90 to 95% retention rate. Look at the person next to you and say, I need an eyeliner. Come on, I need something. Give me some lip gloss. I need something to write on my arm. Take down notes, pull out a phone, an eye device, a droid, whatever you have, and write this down. Favor is connected to expectation. God is graciously wanting to bless us. And sometimes we're not prepared to receive the favor. It's not that we don't have the ability or the skills to receive it. Sometimes we're just having aligned ourselves in a position to grab a hold of the promise. Example, say that God wants to bring increase to your life. He wants to bring promotion to your life. He wants to trust you with more money. Come on, wave at me if you're like, that's me. He's prophesying now. <laughs> so you say, I, Lord, I need that increase. I, I want to be blessed with more favor, but you won't take the time to sit down and do a budget to manage your money. Eee. Maybe God has put a dream in your heart. You're like, I have a dream. I know what God's put in my heart. It's an invention. It's like the pet rock, except better. <laughs> I had a friend last week that called me and said, man, I have a pitch to the show Shark Tank. Can you pray for me? I said, absolutely. I said, Luke 2.52, it said that Jesus grew in favor with both God and man. You're going to walk in, and they're not even going to know why, but they're just going to like you. And you know what? The producers loved it, and he got the pitch to get on the show. Favor ain't fair. Come on, man. That's awesome. But maybe God's put a dream in your heart. Maybe he's given you a desire to do something amazing, but you binge watch Netflix too much. All right, good. Day. Have a great day, everybody. All right. Maybe he wants to shine a light on your family, your marriage, but you have a tough time not being on your phone or social media all the time. I read this statistic that bugged me the other day that said the average family of four that sits at dinner has meaningful conversation for about four minutes. So we have a rule in our family. We put the phone in the drawer. If I have it, happen to have it, my nine-year-old walks over and says, give it up. I'm like, okay, take it easy. She's fiery like her mom. I'm like, here, take it. Don't hit me in the nose. <laughs> but what if God is trying to get something to you, but you haven't aligned yourself in a position to receive it? It kind of reminds me of my friend Fritz. Blessing after blessing is being thrown to him. He just can't seem to grab it. Turn your attention to the screens real quick. Come on, look at the person next to you and say, don't be like Fritz. Come on. 
Because here's the truth. God is wanting to pour out his favor on you. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8, watch. And God will generously provide all that you need. Then you will have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. Get prepared now to grab a hold of the promise. Did you also know that favor is connected to our confession? And listen, if you, if you struggle, a lot of us are verbal, verbal processors. I've been adapting this motto the past couple of years that says, think twice, speak once. Because there's a lot of things I want to say. But you know that one person that walks in and you're like, how are you doing? <laughs> well, it's Monday. <laughs> yeah, everybody else gets blessed. Not me. She got a raise. Not this guy. You know, Janet has a cold again. She should just sneeze directly in my mouth because I'm going to get it. If I even get near her, I'm going to get that. It's a guarantee, 100%. My great, 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 great grandpa, I think he was on the Mayflower, I don't know, but he was super broke, so I know I'm gonna be broke. Change your words. You realize your confession can block your blessing? It can block the favor in your life? This is called free will. God's not a forcer, I said this a moment ago. I say it all the time, God is not a forcer. But you can block your blessing with your words, and I'll give you proof, this is what the Bible says. Proverbs 18, 21. Words kill, or words give life. Either they're poison or they're fruit. Watch, you choose. Write this down if you're taking down notes. Change my thinking, change my words, change my life. You can be the youngest in the room or the oldest. You can be the youngest at Cypress, Cornerstone, Katie. You can be the youngest or the oldest. This is a way of life. According to the words, words kill, words give life. Poison or fruit, you choose. Change my thinking, change my words, change my life. So my question is, what if we started speaking life? I'm gonna give you a 21 day challenge. If you're that negative, pessimistic, woe is me, switch it up for the next 21 days. My family is full of joy. My family is blessed. My marriage is strong. Even though it doesn't look like it, oh, you're one of those blab and grab it preachers. No, the Bible says in Job 22:28 28 to decree a thing and watch, it will be established. So speaking life, you can either be a thermostat or a thermometer. You can tell the temperature or you can establish the temperature and your word changes atmosphere. Look at the person next to you and say, speak life. Come on, let them know. So what happens if we speak life? If favor is connected to our confession, there's this lady and she's amazing. And some of you are going to know who I'm talking about, like not by name, but you just know this type of person. We were on the West Coast preaching and this lady for almost 30 years has meant the power of confession. And so we were ministering at their church and we were going to dinner and they wanted to go to this really cool restaurant right outside of LA. And we got to the parking lot and it was packed. I mean, there was nowhere to park. And I'm like, well, should we go somewhere else? And they were like, no. And she turned and looked at me and real confidently goes, Brother Groves, I, uh, I walk in the fog. And I said, it is smoggy here. This is LA. <laughs> it is gross. I don't know why it's so smoggy. She goes, no, 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 the favor of God. Yeah, you know those people. And I remember thinking, oh, geez, I'm not kidding. She said, watch, we're going to pull up and we're going to get a great parking spot. I'm like, sure you are, Debbie. And so we pull up, no joke, this lady's walking out and she's like, hey, guys, you want this spot? We're like, what just happened? She backed out. We pulled right in. She said, I get what I say. I speak life. And she said, we went in, 45 minute wait. And she said, I've got some friends from out of town. And they were like, just four of you. How about a couple minutes? And they got us sat immediately. She said, I have been sowing seeds for years. I know it sounds like blab it and grab it, but what if we apply it? What if we start speaking life for 21 days? I, uh, my wife and I walked through a storm a, a few years ago and uh, it, it was pretty scary and she almost lost her life. And there was a miracle that happened in the middle of it. Like we saw a providence moment. We saw God show up in an operating room when the doctors told me there was nothing they could do and they thought she was going to die and they ended up saving her life. And they said that uh, medically, her blood count would have been like 4.55 and they were gonna have to give multiple blood transfusions. 11 to 18 is like a healthy blood count. And they said, Mr. Groves, we don't know what happened, but in the operating room, your wife's blood count never dropped below 11. We never had to give her any blood transfusions. It's like her body was producing more blood in minutes than it should have in months and years. God showed up and moved. And that was amazing. I mean, that was miraculous. And we were excited. And then I got the bill. You know what I mean? Like, like, like you have these moments where you're like shouting from the rooftop. And then I got this bill after insurance. I'm like, $16,200. So I called and I asked for favor. I had been believing God. I had been speaking life. 
I said, God, I'm believing for favor. And I called and I said, can I get some favor? And the lady said, no, we don't do that. I said, thank you for your professionalism. All right. <laughs> so about a week later, the Lord took me to James chapter four, verse two. It says, you have not because you ask not. And I just kept hearing the Lord say, call him back. And I'm not hyper spiritualizing this. And I'm not that guy that walks in like, hey, man, you gonna give me a brotherly love discount, right? I got a fish on my car, huh? You and me, Christians, no. Um, but I called and, and this same lady, I talked to her. She said, Mr. Groves, there's really nothing we can do. I said, well, we can set up a payment plan. And she goes, hey, tell me, tell me what happened. Tell me the story. Why just tell her the story? I'm not being like hyper Christian. I'm just Revelation 12, 11, the blood of the lambs, the word of your testimony. I'm literally telling her the story of what God did. And she goes, wow. What an amazing story. She said, I, 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 wanna, I wanna take this up to my supervisor. I wanna start, I wanna see if there's something else we can do. And I said, Linda, I would appreciate this. Like, <laughs> you like fruit baskets? Cause I can maybe send you one of those too. <laughs> Two weeks later, she called me. Hey, Mr. Groves, this is Linda, so-and-so medical center. I said, yeah. She said, um, how does $600 sound? <laughs> Come on. A yeah, clap, that's amazing, Woo, all that. I don't know if I wasn't practicing what I preached, but I went, a month? Just 600 a month, okay, times 12, and then we can, I'm still paying 18,000, okay, okay. She goes, no, 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 no. We're gonna take a $16,200 medical bill, and if you just pay $600, your account will be zero balance, and it will be completely paid off. See, some would say that's a coincidence. I'm gonna give God that, and I believe that was favor. But I believe it was directly linked to expectation and confession. And maybe you're here today and you say, Daniel, this is great, man. Confession, expectation this is awesome. But the truth is, it's not, that's not the issue for me. The issue for me is I just don't feel like I'm worth much. I don't feel very valuable. I feel like damaged goods. I feel like I'm duct taped back together. No way. My past, there's nobody that's going to bless me. God's not going to give me favor. I'm too broken. I'm too messed up. Here's what the Bible says in Psalms 145 verse 9. It says, it says this, the Lord is good to all. He has compassion, watch this line, on all he has made. You're not a mistake. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. See, I was born an accident in the natural into an alcoholic, drug-induced family, like a Jerry Springer episode. Multiple affairs, multiple uh, chaotic moments, almost aborted twice. And I read this verse and it encourages me that the Lord is good to all. His compassion on all he has made. Lamentations chapter three, verse 22, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. I'm grateful for that. Like, like some of y'all should have shouted, like you're not consumed. You woke up again today and you're breathing, which is proof that God's not done with you yet. That's good. We're not consumed for his compassions. Watch, never fail. They're brand new every morning. Great is his faithfulness, his mercy, his compassion, his favor is new every morning. And God's mercy and his grace is bigger than your past in your broken places. Psalms 84, 11 says it this way, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. He gives faith and honor, favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold, watch, from those who walk uprightly. Now I think there's a misconception with uprightly too. Uprightly does not mean perfect. Uprightly is a process that I'm gonna choose to tweak and grow and get better every day in character, integrity, and obedience towards the things of God. So if you've struggled with your worth, if you've struggled with who you are, I want you to delete that misconception and get it out of your head that it doesn't belong to you. Look at the person next to you and say, it belongs to you. Come on, let them know. It belongs to you. I, I need my friend Ben to come up here real quick. Uh, give Ben a hand for coming up. He's awesome. <laughs> Ben's on our team uh, at Hope City and uh, he's married to an uh, amazing girl, Savannah, and my, yeah. my daughter, um, oh wow, one person. They're like, Savannah. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, she's more special than yes. just one clap. But uh, my daughter, who's three, says, uh, where's Miss Mafana and that guy? So like, you do have a name and I know your name, but I want to bless you because I've seen you do a lot of great things. And uh, I just want you to know how valuable and how, uh, how much you're worth. And so I got a crisp, I mean, like clean, almost seems like it's ironed George Washington. Um, for those of you who do not know who's on uh, American Bills, this is a one, premium $1 bill, uh, spend it. You can go to the Dollar Tree and get one item and you're going to need a little change for tax, but bless you. Give him a hand. That was amazing. You're valuable, Ben. We love you. You have a name. Hey, actually, Ben, I got something else. This one's a little bit more ratty. 
Um, same ink, same paper. Um, that one's crisp. We're probably going to want that one because you can frame that one. Like my, like a cool illustration. I got it. But this one says, this is um, Alexander Hamilton. Um, it's a $10 bill. And so this is kind of like, let's make a deal. Um, so you can swap the crisp clean one or you can have, <laughs> take it easy. Are you, you want, okay, you want to swap yeah. it. All right, give Ben a hand. That was amazing. Thanks so much. Be blessed, my friend. Hey, bro, so um, doing laundry the other day, and I, maybe it was just because I had been shopping. Uh, it's no big deal. Uh, but I found this wadded up, same ink, same paper. It's been busted up and broke down and stomped on and battered and barely put back together. And it's, it has a past and it feels fragile. And, and it's honestly trash. And so, uh, but it's a... It's a um, it's a Benjamin Franklin, and it has a $100 bill. What did you say? That's my name. He said it's his name. <laughs> so wait a minute. But this is all ratty. Like, it's trash now. So I'll just get somebody to come grab it. They can throw out the trash. I'll get but it. you're blessed. I'll get it. I'll get it. What are you going to do? Are you going to throw it out? Yeah, I'll throw it away. So here's the reality. It does not matter how battered up, busted up, ratty, wrinkled, damaged. It, it does not change the value or the worth of what has been imprinted on it. Some of you are sitting here thinking that you're so damaged that God can't show up. He will heal you and restore you and he will bless you. Look at the person next to you and say you're valuable. No, no, he'll even give you the crisp things, the 10 and the 100. Bless Ben. Come on, give him a hand as he goes. Know your worth. Know your worth. I met this couple the other day and their testimony is phenomenal. You know, your story matters. You may have a squeaky clean story like, I've only listened to Christian music and watched Kirk Cameron films. And that's awesome. But maybe you have a crazy story like you found a dead body in a Motel 6 pool. I don't know. But whatever your story is, it matters. And no matter what your past looks like, the sovereignty, the grace, and the goodness of God can heal and restore anything. Number two, if you're taking down notes, write this down. Don't quit before you see the favor of God. Don't quit before you see the favor of God. Galatians chapter six, verse nine says, let us not grow weary in well-doing for in due time, watch, you will reap a harvest if we do not give up. I feel like so many times we're right here on the edge of receiving favor. We're right on the cusp of grabbing the promise and in our humanity, we quit before we see it fulfilled. Um, two weeks ago, Pastor Oric called and asked if, uh, uh, we, my little boy could come to his little boy Samuel's birthday party. And he was like, uh, Daniel, I want you to come to this trampoline park. Yeah, he's from Nigeria. That is a terrible impersonation. I'm working on it. I'm trying, okay? And so we, we get there and there's like 400 kids. Like it is madness. I'm like, I'm definitely not going out there. Like I'm just gonna let the kids play. And so I'm just sitting off to the side, like just hanging out. Pastor Jeremy walks in. He's like, hey man, where's your socks? And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, your jump socks. And I'm like, I've got socks on, they're underneath the shoes. They're inside the shoes here. And he's like, bro, go get your jump socks. We're jumping. He's like, I'm gonna throw a dodgeball and knock your beard off. I'm like, what? <laughs> That's healthy competition. And so I was like, fine. So I went and got the jump socks. We're out there having a blast. We're like two four-year-olds, like jumping off walls and climbing rock, climbing walls. And, and what I didn't think through was I had my phone in my back pocket. And there is a, there is a, a foam pit that's about two of this stage. It's massive. The biggest foam pit, like fire codes, probably 80 kids. Like we're in there, you're jumping on top, but if you really dig deep, it's five, six foot deep. And, and I realized after trying to go over and, and do the trampoline basketball dunk contest, when, when pastor Kevin Lucas asked me if, if I, he could use my phone to video it, I realized, Oh no, I don't have my phone. Oh, it's over there in that foam pit. So no big deal, I'll just walk over and we'll find it. So I walk over to this guy, I was like, hey man, loud music, tap him on the shoulder, I said, hey man, he turns and looks at me, I said, hey, I lost my phone in there. And he goes, it's gone. That's all he said. <laughs> he just said, it's gone. I was like, that's not the end of the answer. Like, that's not a period at the end of the sentence. I was like, what do you mean it's gone? He's like, man, we clean that out every 30 to 45 days. Give me your name and number, we'll call you March 15th. I'm like, no, 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 no. He's like, no, literally, we find watches and jewelry and collector coins. I'm like, okay, nobody has collector coins here. Like, you're making that part up. And he was like, you're never gonna find it. Literally, you're never gonna find it. Well, see, I'm an Enneagram eight wing seven. And so I'm a rallier. I'll pull strangers together. So I rallied a team of about 60. And I said, I got a hundred dollar reward for anybody that can find a tactical green 11 iPhone. 
And all these kids were like, we're doing it, we're going. Pastor Oreg was like, I'm going to jump in. So he helps. <laughs> Pastor Devin from Cyprus helped. Pastor Kevin goes, oh, that's awesome. And he jumped in. <laughs> that's amazing. So he jumps in. And one by one, I have this entire army helping me from my phone. It's a matter of just a few moments. I'm going to have this phone back. An hour passes. Devin's like, I'm out. Pastor Ari's like, I need to focus on my son. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Kevin's like, man, I gotta go. And everybody quit. Pastor Jeremy was still praying for me. And then one by one, everybody left. So I rallied a whole nother team. And this kid walks up to me. He's about 14, but he had a mustache and he was about my height. So I'm like, whose dad are you? Like, I don't believe this. And he goes, mister, what's your phone look like? And I told him, he said, you're still good for the hundred? I said, yes. He said, I'm finding that phone. He had, like, it was eerie how confident he was. And they're almost closing, and all of a sudden, just He walks up in, like, slow motion. He had found the phone. He had dug all the way to the bottom where all the pink eye is and all of the <laughs> other stuff. And he found it. I offered him AirPods. He said no. He said he had a droid, which is more superior. I'm like, oh, God, now you get $50. Uh, <laughs> My point is he did not quit. Sometimes it just takes the determination and the faith of someone who will not quit. Don't quit before you reach your promise. True story, the next day I got the flu. I really did. It's nothing to do with the story, but it really happened. Okay. Quick side note. We have to start celebrating people that walk in favor. Like we're really, really bad about this in our culture where we see somebody else and we're like, wow, look how great he's doing. Jeez. But you have no idea the seeds that they sowed of obedience a long time ago. And maybe now they're living in the harvest of that. So instead of complaining, why don't we start celebrating and plant seeds ourselves of obedience so that we have a harvest to walk into. I don't know who that was for, but grab that. All right, number three, if you're taking down notes, when you receive favor, pass it on. When you receive favor, pass it on. Proverbs eleven twenty five 25 says this, Those, the one who blesses others is abundantly blessed. Those who help others are helped. Pastor Jeremy said in week one, we find favor when we favor others. I was on a flight, I, I fly a lot, and this was one of the first times that I had uh, gotten status with Delta, and they were like, Mr. Groves, I had an unexpected upgrade to first class. I'm like, see all you normal people, I'm going up to better things. And so I'm up here, I'm getting comfortable, I got my blanket, and, and got you know coffee cup with glass, it's glass. I'm like, this is super fancy. I'm like, this is great. So I'm sitting there, and this serviceman walk in. It, it, listen, if you have served our country across all campuses, wave at me. We wanna honor you today. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Serviceman walks in, mid fifties, army uniform. I said, Hey, and I always do this. I said, Hey, thank you. Thank you for, for fighting for our freedom. Thank you for, and I shook his hand. He said, I appreciate it. He walked by. As soon as I shook his hand, the Lord said, pass on the favor. And I said, that's a familiar spirit. That's not the Lord. I'm cozy. <laughs> Lord bless him. God. And bless. So I'm sitting there fighting it. Finally, I was like, boom. And the lady came over. She's like, yes, sir. Do you want me to freshen your coffee? I was like, ah, the serviceman that just walked by, where's he sitting? And she goes, Oh, like all the way in the back. I'm definitely the devil now. Like, I'm not going back. I'm not going all the way back. Are you kidding me right now? I just got upgraded. I kept hearing the Lord say, pass on the favor. So I said, I want to, I want to bless him with, with this seat. And she said, really? And I said, yeah. And she's like, okay. So he walks up and I'm like, sir, I want to, I want to bless you. Thank you for, for serving our country. And I just, I want to give up my seat. And he's like, you don't have to. I said, like, I know. I definitely know that. But, so I went in the back. There's cage fighting back there. People are drinking out of paper cups. It's, oh, it's just so bad. It's terrible. <laughs> Afterwards, we're grabbing our bags and he was standing and I walked over and I said, hey, again, thank you for, for serving our country. And he goes, man, I got to tell you. He said, I, I just, and I asked him, I said, how long have you been in the army? He said, uh, just over 30 years. I said, wow, that's amazing. He said, uh, man, you know what's so funny? I just told my wife two days ago, I've never flown first class before. It'd be really cool to fly first class sometime. Maybe her and me or me on one of my trips. And he goes, that was the very first time. Thank you for blessing me. Listen, God will give you more favor when you pass it on. God will give you more favor when you bless others. And sometimes favor can be passed on by just simply being kind. All of us release a sound. Sometimes it's frustration, sometimes it's anxiety filled. All of us have a sound that we release. And 
Man, if we could choose to look like Jesus and put on the garment of praise and recognize that favor is resting on us and we can release kindness. I read this story about this older gentleman, late 80s, who went to the same breakfast spot every day and he was super rude. Like you could just tell, like he's had some history, he's had a past and he was rude to everybody. So every waitress would be like, what can I get you today? He's like, oh boy, you rushed today. Clearly didn't do your hair. Like he was just super rude, made fun of their weight. I mean, to the point where they were like, we don't wanna help this dude. The manager came over and said, you ever heard that saying, um, kill him with kindness? She said, when, when he's rude, be kinder. When he's really mouthy, be even kinder. When he's hurtful, be even kinder. Show him what Jesus looks like, be even kinder. The girls were like, okay. Four months later, this gentleman passed away. I was telling my daughter, who's nine, I was telling her on, my, on our drive home last night, I was like, there's a saying called kill him with kindness. And I was telling her, I was like, and then four months later he passed on and she goes, so, whoa, so they really did kill him with kindness. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Four months later, this gentleman comes to the diner and says, hey, um, where's Kristen? We're so-and-so, we're so-and-so. And he begins to read, I've never been treated so kindly. My whole life, I stopped trusting humanity. I didn't feel like there were good people anymore. No matter how rude I was, these ladies were super, super authentic and kind to me. And he left each of them $10,000 in his will. Some of y'all are like, I'm gonna talk to everybody that's rude to me now. <laughs> the truth is, if you expect to receive favor, then you should, you should place an expectation on yourself and you should place it, you shouldn't, I think this is key to not place the same expectation on others. You just continue to be who you are. And I'm telling you, you will attract and people will be drawn to you and they'll start reflecting the same kindness that you're reflecting to them. One of my favorite um, verses, it's a, it's a verse that we quote, Pastor Jeremy, myself, Carla, anybody who's closing, we speak what the Bible theologians say is the greatest blessing in the Bible. Numbers chapter six, verse 24, it says this, may the Lord, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Turn his face towards you and ultimately give you peace. I, I wanna go a little deeper here just for a minute. If you look at this in this verse, Two times the word face is mentioned, that his face would shine on you and that he would turn his face towards you. The word turn and the word face come from the Hebrew word, uh, root word uh, um, um, uh, pana. What does that mean? It literally means to turn and your body language, your attention shifts. Have you ever been in a conversation with somebody and they're not looking at you? Like they don't look at you in the face, they don't look at you in the eyes and you're like, just look at me, just look at me. I do it all the time with my kids. Literally, this is saying, may the Lord bless you. He's providing for you. May he keep you, protect you. His face, he's looking down upon you and saying, hey, I see you. I value you. May he be gracious to you. That gracious to you literally means the, he'll grant you favor. May he turn his face, literally the posture of God shifting in your direction. When the posture of God shifts in your direction, it activates faith and it activates favor in your life. May he give you peace. As I read this verse, this declaration, I, 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 I tied it with Exodus 33, where Moses literally said, God, show me your glory. If I could just get a glimpse of your presence, I know that things in my life will change. I think we need to start praying bold prayers like that. God, make your face shine upon me. Turn your countenance towards me. Let heaven touch earth and let me get caught in between. I, uh, I was praying for Hope City the other night. And I started thinking about this verse. I think we all unanimously agree across all campuses that we don't have to pray for revival here. We're in the middle of a revival. Thank you for your overwhelming enthusiasm. We don't have to pray for revival. We're in the middle of it. Healing and breakthrough and miracles and people being set free and delivered. But I was praying for Hope City and I was thinking about the Silos property specifically. And I said, God, your favor has been on us. Your face has been shining on us. It's as if you've literally turned and faced us and your countenance is shining on us and you've been gracious to us. You've activated favor and faith and so many things here. And, and, but I know there's more. And we were, I was thinking about, I was talking to Pastor Jeremy the other day. I said, it's so amazing how when we had audacious faith to say yes to the silos, God gave us direction, but you know, he doesn't always give you the details. He doesn't. Think about it. 
He'll give you direction, go this way. Well, why? Just go. <laughs> he doesn't always give you the details because he doesn't want you to have faith in the details. He wants you to have faith and trust in him. So when we took on the silos and we said yes to the silos, we also took on a mortgage, amen. <laughs> See, in the natural, those were the details. The faith was in the direction. Well, watch this. When we stepped into the silos because we stepped in with audacious faith, we also acquired a business an RV and boat business that pays monthly, monthly tenants, the monthly payments that come in from the business pays for 100% of the mortgage on the property that we were able to acquire. So everything that we sow towards the silos does not go to the payments, it goes to the principal. That looks like God's face and favor shining on us. The most amazing thing about being the body of Christ is this declaration that our pastor prophesies over us weekly is not just flippant words. We really believe that he'll bless you and keep you. We really believe that his face is shining on you and your marriage and your family and future marriage. We believe that he'll grant you favor. We believe that his countenance and his face is turning towards you, that he'll grant you peace that surpasses all understanding. Stand to your feet as we bring this in for a landing. I went to San Pedro Sula, Honduras. And uh, I was fired up to go be a part of this conference. And I felt the Lord prompt me for three straight months to pray that benediction. So we begin to pray that miracles would break out, that God would show up in that region, that his face would shine on him, that he'd be gracious to us, there would be protection, that he would shift his attention and focus in that area, that we would see miracles. And for three months, we prayed like every day as a team. We land in San Pedro Sula and we didn't check the weather and a tropical storm was coming in and we were one of the last flights that landed. I got caught up in my humanity, I'll be honest. I'm like, God, we prayed for three months. We prayed that you would show up. And I'm, a used, I'm used to Americanized Christianity where it rains and you're like, I'm definitely not going out that. I'm gonna have underwear at church. I'll just stay home and watch it online. I'm not gonna go. <laughs> so we show up, we're sitting at this place and I'm frustrated. There's nobody gonna be there. And my wife's doing that, babe, even if one shows up, I said, babe, the guy unlocking the building's not gonna show up. Like even the one, he's not even coming. And she said, did we come here by accident? I said, no. She said, are we here on purpose for a purpose? I said, yeah. She said, can God still breathe in the middle of a storm? I said, you quit prophesying on me right now. <laughs> can his face shine in the middle of darkness? Can he still turn his countenance in the middle of heaviness? Can he still wake up in the middle of a storm that's on a boat and say peace to the storm? Yes. So this lady picks us up in this van and she's like, get in, get in, like really in a rush. There's people with guns. I'm like, are you sure? We're supposed to? So we got in, I was like, I think this is all right. <laughs> and I called her Pamela and she said, it's not Pamela, it's Pamela. I said, okay, it's spelled exactly the same, but I'll <laughs> And I said, well, I'm Daniel. She said, I have to call you Bishop. I said, okay. And I said, uh, Pamela, she said, yes, Bishop. I said, Pamela, she said, yes, Bishop. I said, Senora, she said, yes. I'm like, okay, how long are we gonna do this for? I asked this loaded question, did not think it would be loaded. All of us would ask this question. Hey, is there anybody gonna be there tonight? She doesn't have like a single tear, like, oh, Bishop. She starts weeping. Like, she's like, ah, like, why, why even? I'm like, she's driving 100 mile an hour, and I'm like, oh, because there's no speed limits there. You just drive. I'm like, there's a cow. Oh, there's a goat. Like, just go around. I'm like, it's crazy. And my wife's like, what did you say to her? I'm like, I just asked her if anybody was going to be there. She said, I understood your question. I just don't know why you asked it. And I said, oh, okay. She said, they've been gathered there for days. There's billboards around the city that says miracles for your family, miracles for your physical body. Jesus will be at the San Pedro Sula Arena. She said thousands are gathered there in the middle of this storm. We show up and literally over 7,000 people were gathered to get inside of this arena to get a glimpse of the face of God, to get a glimpse of the miracle worker, to get a glimpse of the way maker. We saw over 2,000 people give their lives to Jesus. Miracles breaking out. It was one of the greatest movements of revival I had ever been a part of. And the only thing that I have been a part of that seems like that is what's happening here at Hope City. And I believe what God is doing here 
These are stories we brag and boast on. Talk about the hand of God moving. But this is my challenge. Begin to, as individuals, begin to, as the local church, begin to, as the body of Christ, begin to ask him, lift your hands towards heaven. Repeat this with me. Say, may the Lord bless us. May the Lord keep us. Make his face to shine upon us. May he be gracious to us. Turn his face towards us and give us peace. Come on, if you believe we're in the middle of revival, will you give the Lord a shout of praise? With your eyes closed just for a moment, the reason we do all of this is because we believe that people that are far from God should have an opportunity to know him. If you're here today and you say, Daniel, I don't know Jesus as my savior, but in my heart today, something has been stirring in me to say yes to Jesus. Maybe you're here and you say, the truth is I used to know him, but I've fallen away. I got caught up in the prodigal life and I want to know him today across all campuses and additional seating. Please, nobody moving just for a moment. I'm going to count to three and we won't embarrass you here. And here at Hope City, we don't even pray prayers for symbolic reasons. We pray because Romans 10 verse 9 and 10 says, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and you will be saved. I'm going to count to three. If you want to give your life to God, lift up your hand in just a moment or rededicate. One, two, three. Lift up your hand. That's you all over it. Man, hand, 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 everywhere. Hope City, give them a hand. Come on, this is amazing. Hand all over this location. I know across the other campuses. So this is what we're going to do. And then Carla's going to come out and give you some more direction from our sound booth to our Hope City worship team. We're all going to pray as a church family. The Bible says the shepherd leaves the 99 for the one. Heaven is about to rejoice with us for all the lives that are transformed today. Say this prayer with me. Jesus, it's me. I surrender it all. Every mistake, my entire past, I ask for your forgiveness. From this moment on, I'm going to live for you. I'm going to serve you. I confess you now as my Father, my Savior, and my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, Hope City, give the Lord a shout of praise.